The countryside around Kolontar, Hungary, is mired in poisonous industrial sludge, which killed nine people, hurt many more, and brought devastation to the whole area around its aluminium plants. The economic cost has not yet been calculated. Investigations continue into what failed and who might be responsible. Many farmers are staggering, like the Fuchs brothers. Jolt, whose business is in poultry, estimates he lost four million eggs. His machinery took a million euros worth of damage. This part here is for pasteurization of the eggs. We liquefy eggs, this is destroyed, we can't use this part of our factory anymore, we'll have to move it or rebuild it. Jolt wants to resume production as soon as possible, but he's afraid he will have to move the plant because of toxins left in the soil here. He says some of his competitors are taking advantage of his misfortune. They've been circulating false claims about the situation here, even though it's been cleared after an investigation. It is OK. I'm afraid they will run a negative marketing campaign against my company, saying that all the food coming from this area is hazardous. Jolt expects the government will take court action against the aluminium company at the source of his troubles, but he is afraid that will drag out. In the meantime, the government is paying to clean up the area, but the future is shrouded in mud. It will depend on what the officials say about the health risks. That's not determined yet. A lot hangs on the kind of financial support we can get. Cattle and crops have been heavily affected. This is Gabor's field. He is Jolt's brother. He owns 43 cows and 200 hectares. More than half that land was flooded in the disaster. He's afraid it is permanently lost. Gabor was burned by the alkaline in the red mud. Instead of fleeing the wave, he rushed to save his cattle. He figures he has lost about 400,000 euros. I have to move my livestock because the pasture is flooded. Another problem is my 20 hectares of corn. I can't harvest it now. And my third problem is the loans I have to pay off. A cheque this month is going to be impossible. I'll probably lose next year's crop as well. Some houses are being pulled down too. The owners will get compensation. New houses will be built somewhere else in the village. One of the villagers tells us why homes are being torn down. For two reasons. One, because they were deluged with mud and there is still a huge amount everywhere, which is impossible to clean up. Secondly, they have decided to build a new dam and any houses within its perimeter will be destroyed. The Hungarian government and the European Commission say the emergency is over and that the pollution has been prevented from reaching the Danube River. Because of the, uh, the moisture in the, uh, in the air. One thing is clear, the government is committed to provide housing for those who have lost their houses to the floods and the government is committed to seek agricultural rehabilitation that is effective for the area. From the European Commission, we have informed the Hungarian authorities that they can 
rely on structural funds and rural development funds if they require to deploy them for this area. Ecologists, however, have not given European vigilance full marks. They have doubts about a mining waste directive which leaves to EU member states decisions on handling, storage and classification. Before 2004, uh, this red mud was considered a hazardous waste in Hungary. But after we joined the European Union, it simply became unhazardous. The regulations we have are good. The criticality is for those regulations to be followed and implemented. And actually, Hungary is one of the countries that have been among the best to integrate legislation. But then the next step that is a critical step is to make sure that they are implemented. There is, there is adequate monitoring to implement them. If the Hungarian authorities are found to have inadequately applied the EU directive on pollution prevention and control, Hungary could be liable for legal action under a European infringement procedure. There are also other areas of high environmental concern along the Danube River, such as Almasfuzito. In Almasfuzito, uh, it is actually uh, the flood protection dike, uh, which is the wall of uh, the dam of the reservoir so it means if there's a, any kind of leakage then it simply gets to the Danube and uh, it uh, pollutes our drinking water. According to the WWF without strict EU monitoring Central and Eastern European countries are likely to act preferentially towards big companies that employ thousands of people such as Kolontas, Mal economic interests conflict with environmental interests. As for people's health, we went to see a doctor in De Vecher, one of the villages worst hit by the toxic sludge. This red mud contains heavy metals, and heavy metals don't leave the body. They accumulate, and after a certain point, they can cause problems. So, theoretically, some experts say people here could soon be facing problems with mucous membranes and their blood. The inhabitants of Devetzer are already reporting sore throats and difficulty with breathing. In evaluating the disaster, observers say things could have been far worse. And they point out that along the Danube, there are still too many old hazardous industrial plants, not only in Hungary, but also in Serbia and Romania. A plaque now hangs on an old war memorial in the mud zone, saying in memory of the victims of negligence and greed. <laughs>